Imagine you look up at the sky and are met with tiny robot planes moving like a flock of birds. Terrifying, right? Well, in 2018, scientists at Intel made 1,218 small drones dance in the sky with lights during the Winter Olympics, setting a world record. This harmless light show showed how well the swarms of drones could coordinate. But people weren't the only ones who saw those same drone swarms. The military did, in advance, and asked a million-dollar question. What if we used them in a war? While most know that a drone is like a flying robot or an unmanned airplane that can carry cameras, but in military uses, it can even carry weapons. The AI part may sound intimidating, but it really just means that it has a computer brain to help it decide, which is probably intimidating on second thought. Even before the 2018 Olympic light show, Chinese scientists had already begun training swarms in late 2017. After the event, many other countries joined in. One test had about two dozen drones flying together as a team on a mock mission, while another test launched over a hundred drones together to scout and simulate attacks. In the United States, projects like DARPA's Offset worked on tactics for hundreds of drones, and by late 2021, Pentagon videos showed swarms flying in Kentucky. All this showed the idea I explained earlier. If so many drones could work together, they can be used in battle. By 2020, drone swarms were no longer just tests. For the first time, they showed up in real battles. In March 2020 in Libya, a United Nations report found that some attack drones had been set to operate in autonomous mode. The UN report suggested the Cargo 2 drones may have operated in autonomous mode, tracking targets without direct human input. If confirmed, it would mark one of the first reported cases of a drone carrying out an attack autonomously without direct human control. Around the same time, another conflict was filled with tiny, explosive drones. In the war between Armenia and Azerbaijan, hundreds of cheap drones flew overhead and dove onto targets, crushing tanks and troops. As one Reuters report noted, these small, cheap, deadly drones were used with devastating effect. But what are their specifications? What makes these drones so efficient? Military drone swarms can range from tiny quadcopters to larger fixed-wing UAVs. For example, Turkey's STM Cargo 2 is a quad rotor about 0.7 meters across and 0.4 meters tall, with a takeoff weight of approximately 7.7 .7 kilograms. It carries either armor-piercing or anti-personnel warheads on a small payload bay. In contrast, fixed-wing ones like the U.S. has, called Raytheon Coyote, are about 0.9 meters long with 1.5 meter wingspan. When it comes to range and endurance, small rotary drones have limited flight time. The Cargo 2 actually endures for around 25 to 30 minutes, with a large control range of around 6.5 kilometers on its own antenna, which is even extendable to around 10 kilometers with a larger antenna. Similarly, Russia's Lancet 3 flies around 40 minutes at a 40-kilometer range. FPV quadcopters usually fly only a few kilometers on a small battery, often under 10 minutes before hitting the target. By contrast, fixed-wing loiterers, like the one I previously mentioned, have far greater range. Raytheon's Coyote Block 1 cruises approximately 100 kilometers in over one hour. These swarm drones carry either sensors or munitions for strikes. In the example of Cargo 2, it can mount lightweight and anti-personnel or armor-piercing munitions, while Lancet 3 can carry about 3 kilograms of high-explosive or fragmentation warheads. But how do they communicate with one another? Small drones typically use short-range radio links to a local controller. For example, FPV quads rely on the pilot's first-person video feed and have no beyond-line-of-sight BLOS capability. Autonomy among swarm drones runs from zero to quite advanced. FPV quads are not autonomous. A person wears goggles and flies them in real time. By contrast, micro swarms, such as Perdix, are programmed to fly together as a coordinated group without a single leader, automatically adjusting formation and tasking as they go. However, here's something you don't necessarily know. These drones aren't some save-all, fix-all. In fact, FPV drones tend to crash a lot. Even experienced operators struggle with them on occasion. So while they do have serious upside, the technology still hasn't reached its peak.
Many attack drones also carry cameras, or special sensors called seekers, which help them spot and home in on targets. For example, the Cargo 2 has an electro-optical slash infrared camera with a 10x optical zoom used to detect and track targets. On the other hand, the Lancet 3 uses a TV optical imaging seeker for final or terminal guidance toward what it is meant to hit. Most FPV, or first person view, racing, or hobby quads used as one-way attack drones carry just a forward camera so the human pilot can see where they fly, but more advanced systems can host several sensors at once. For example, the Altius 600 is designed to accept up to 3.2 kilograms of modular payloads, so it can carry different sensor packages, or small warheads, as needed. Defense experts even went as far as to warn that these tiny robots could be a game changer. One analyst said, these drones are a game changer to the future of conflict. In other words, people realized they had just seen a preview of how war might change. The next two years saw drone swarms spread and grow in number. In early 2022, a major war between Russia and Ukraine became the ultimate testing ground for these drones. Both sides sent thousands of drones into battle. In Ukraine's fields and towns, daily videos showed cheap, first-person view FPV drones crashing into enemy tanks. These FPV drones were named this because the pilot on the ground saw through the drone's camera. And even though they were originally toy or hobby drones, now they were armed with explosives and became dangerous tools. In one battle, a report explained a drone costing only a few hundred dollars destroyed a tank worth millions. Tiny drones buzzed overhead while soldiers took cover. In this photo, a handheld controller steers an FPV drone as a spotter watches maps on a tablet. These little robot aircraft were surprisingly effective. If an enemy tank tried to move, a drone could chase it and hit its weakest spot, becoming one of the biggest threats on the battlefield. Troops facing them said they learned to fear the ominous whine of drones. It often meant they were being targeted. Modern tanks and artillery found they had to stay well behind the front lines because the drones could seek and hit them even if they tried to hide. Many armies also used drones simply for scouting. Small reconnaissance drones with cameras flew above and sent back live video. A soldier on the ground could then direct fire or call in a strike on what the drone found. Ukraine even built digital maps that combined drone footage to pinpoint enemies. This meant that uniforms and trenches were no longer safe from above. Even though it didn't seem like it at first, it was a major shift in historical battle tactics. Both sides formed whole drone units. One report said almost every brigade had its own drone company for spying or attacking. The drone wave also reached other conflicts, too. In late 2023, rebels in the Middle East fired drones at ships in the Red Sea, causing a U.S. Navy warship to shoot them down. And back in Ukraine, the skies filled with military drones. These were not isolated incidents. They were part of a mass swarm attack, which solidified only one thing. Fighting didn't need soldiers to begin. Also in 2023, the major powers fully recognized what drones could do, and they raced to build even more for defense. U.S. defense leaders announced plans to build thousands of autonomous drones in the next few years. U.S. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks said America would field multiple thousands of unmanned systems soon. That means the U.S. military planned whole armies of drones. The U.S. Air Force even revealed a plan for 1,000 unmanned stealth fighter drones to accompany manned jets. China showed its own jet-like drone, the FH-97A, at an air show. It was a new kind of arms race. These drone armies had big advantages. They could do crazy stunts that human pilots couldn't survive. Jet drones can pull extreme maneuvers, dive, and turn in ways that would black out a person. They don't need oxygen masks or parachutes. They can stay aloft for hours, refuel themselves, or even land and take off again on their own power. Best of all, commanders could throw them into danger without risking a single human life. Losing a robot hurts the engineer at best and not a family. Commanders could win by sending in more targets than the enemy could shoot down. Commanders could win by sending in more targets than the enemy could shoot down. Private companies also jumped in. Silicon Valley backed Andoril has been developing large autonomous undersea vehicles called 
Ghost Shark for the Royal Australian Navy, a long-range XL AUV meant for persistent patrol and surveillance. But there's no public evidence that such systems have been supplied to Ukraine. Meanwhile, tech entrepreneurs in Kiev and elsewhere rapidly pivoted to building war-relevant tools and autonomy to reduce frontline risk, arguing advanced systems can limit the need to expose human soldiers. Designers raced to build the next generation of drone soldiers in the air, at sea, and on land, all powered by new AI brains. Soon, drone swarms were an openly discussed strategy. The idea was simple to counter massed enemy weapons with a mass of your own robots. If one side had more tanks or missiles, the other side could try to overwhelm them with thousands of cheap drones. As one US official put it, for the Allies, swarms of cheap drones could offset China's numerical advantage. The logic was, send out so many little robots that the enemy can't hit them all. In practice, this thinking meant countries were pouring money into factory lines and labs for drones. By 2025, the drone revolution had become very real and very troubling. It was no longer hypothetical. Most large armed forces now operated swarms of drones. Leaders around the world held emergency meetings. In the halls of the United Nations, diplomats met to discuss autonomous weapons systems and ask for international rules. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned time was running out to set guardrails on this technology. Human rights and science experts stood up and said, machines should not be trusted with lives. One Amnesty International researcher, Patrick Wilkin, told reporters, the idea of letting a machine make decisions about human survival seems extraordinary. In plain language, he and many others found it astonishing and scary to even consider letting a computer make the call on who lives or dies. Human Rights Watch also warned that without any clear laws, we might unleash a dangerous arms race. If every nation just built its own robot army, nobody would have checks and balances. Despite the alarm, progress on rules was slow. Reports noted that 164 countries supported an urgent call to address these weapons in 2023, but the big powers preferred voluntary guidelines instead of strict bans. Some argued that the existing laws might be enough, which in practice simply meant that each country raced ahead with its projects, often in secret. On the ground, the facts spoke loudly. Studies counted about 200 different autonomous weapon systems already in use around the world. It was clear, wherever there was fighting, someone was trying autonomous weapons. And the nature of war itself had changed. Drone technology has democratized warfare. That means even a smaller or poorer military could now pack a big punch, because buying a thousand small drones might cost less than buying one modern fighter jet. Now, many nations realized they had to get their own drones or be at a huge disadvantage. Five years after those first experiments, the world's battlefields look astonishingly different. The sky above conflicts is filled with robot aircraft hunting targets on their own. Cities and towns have to prepare for drone attacks, much like they used to prepare for artillery or missiles. Armies frantically train operators for their drone swarms, and civilians learn new air raid drills for drone alerts. The drone swarms have rewritten the rules of war. Many soldiers feel they can do their jobs without jumping into trenches because they send drones instead of risking their lives. But this also made battles more chaotic. Even medical teams reported that reaching affected areas was no longer safe as drone activity had turned them into high-risk zones. The power balance has shifted in surprising ways. For starters, Technology companies now have a bigger say in war plans than ever before. Questions that once sounded like science fiction are now practical. Who is truly in control of these machines? If an autonomous drone makes a mistake, who goes to trial for it? And if one side's software has a bug, how do we make sure it doesn't accidentally start an unwanted war? At this point, we are living through history, where we have allowed machines to become soldiers. Words that carry both awe and warning. There were no Hollywood-style robot uprisings. These drones are still controlled by people, but the speed at which they took over the skies has been sobering. One thing was clear to everyone watching. The release of thousands of robot fighters has already changed war forever. Looking ahead, the drone revolution is already accelerating into new domains, both technologically and geopolitically. 
In 2025, Sikorsky unveiled a new Nomad family of vertical takeoff drones that can scale from small tactical vehicles to sizes comparable to medium helicopters. These systems are built to carry cargo, conduct intelligence missions, and even assist in search and rescue, all while operating without runways. The significance? Future drone swarms may not just strike, they'll resupply, extract personnel, or change roles mid-mission, blurring lines between traditional logistics and combat roles. On the autonomy front, MIT researchers recently published an adaptive control system that lets drones maintain precision even in chaotic environments, gusting winds, signal interference, or environmental disturbances. That kind of robustness is essential if drones are going to operate in contested or degraded battle zones, not just controlled airspace. In response, defense thinkers are racing to develop counter-drone systems that can neutralize threats without collateral damage. The Pentagon's Replicator project is asking industry to come up with smart, non-destructive ways to shut down hostile drones. At the same time, legal and regulatory boundaries are being tested. In the U.S., federal laws still restrict many counter-UAS measures for private infrastructure, creating a gap between the technological capability and the legal authority to act. It's also worth noting that the academic frontier is pushing in new directions. A 2025 review of agentic UAVs argues that future drones won't just follow orders. They'll reason, plan, and adapt their missions like autonomous agents. That means the next generation of drone systems may evolve mid-flight, shift priorities, or negotiate trade-offs with human oversight but less constant control. The five-year journey of these AI-driven drones has been a story of tech wonder, in a way. They started as experiments, almost like science projects, but they became a new kind of army. As the world looks on, we are forced to think about the arms race in general. As technology takes new highs, how will we keep the reins on such powerful machines that we ourselves create? For now, though, we have to wait. The debate and the rules made next will shape whether our skies stay safe or become even more dangerous. What do you think? Do you think drones are here to stay, or will there be more legislation coming in? Or are they simply the current generation's version of artillery, much like guns were in the past? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.